Welcome back, everybody. Mike Tipton here, along with the Alzheimer's Foundation of America Director of Communication, Chris Schneider. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Y'all have a really cool event that you're to be that you're going to be doing virtually, and you're inviting the city of El Paso. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it's going to take place on March 9th. You can register by visiting our website, alzfdn.org. It is a free Alzheimer's educational conference, which is part of our National Educating America tour. It's open to all Texans, whether you're affected by Alzheimer's disease, whether you're a caregiver, even if you just want to learn more about brain health, we invite you to come down and participate virtually. Again, just register through our website, alzfdn.org, totally free. And we look forward to seeing everybody on March 9th. So there's always that big question, right? Like, what is Alzheimer's? Because I feel like everyone kind of has an idea of what Alzheimer's is, but what is Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's is a progressive degenerative brain disorder. And one of the big misconceptions around Alzheimer's is that it's just a normal part of aging. You know, so often you hear people, maybe they're becoming more forgetful as they age and someone says, ah, well, you're just getting old. It must be Alzheimer's. You know, it, it's not a normal part of aging. It's a disease. And one of the things to remember is that there is a big difference between basic forgetfulness, things that happen to us every day, and something like Alzheimer's. And one of the ways that really you should be proactive about your own brain health is by getting a memory screening. And that's something that AFA offers. You can you can do it virtually through our website. Just go to alzfdn.org or call us at 866-232-8484. And all the screening is, is it consists of a series of questions that a screener will ask you one-on-one, totally confidential. And it's designed to test your memory and your thinking and your your language skills. And at the end of the screening, you get a score. If you're above the baseline, terrific, come back in a year. If you're below the baseline, the screener will get, well, we'll recommend that you go see your physician for a more comprehensive evaluation. It's not a diagnosis of any particular condition, but it's an important first step in identifying a potential memory problem. And they're free and open to everybody. So again, just visit our website or call us and make an appointment. How important is it to, to get screened and, and kind of know that you're fighting Alzheimer's uh, early on? Like, because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the earlier, the better, right? You're absolutely right. Early detection with Alzheimer's as with any condition is critically important. So if it is Alzheimer's, the earlier you detect it, the sooner you can start medications, which may help slow the progression of some of the symptoms. It gives you greater opportunity to enroll in a clinical trial. It allows you to start different therapeutic and life enriching activities sooner, things like music therapy, art therapy, dance therapy. And it also allows you to start getting different health legal and financial decisions made early on, making sure that your voice uh, is is included in the process and that these decisions are made in the way you want them to be made. But just as important, if it's not Alzheimer's, you know, there are other conditions that can cause memory loss. Things like a vitamin deficiency, a thyroid condition, sleep apnea, urinary tract infections, depression, all of those can cause memory loss problems. But they're also all treatable, if not curable. But you're never going to know unless you figure out what the cause of the memory issue is. And that's why getting screened is so important. And equally as important, if you're not experiencing memory loss symptoms, you now have a baseline going forward so that if you start to see over the years that your score is getting lower and lower, well, that helps you identify much earlier that you may have a problem that needs to get checked out. And, and it's it's super important to make sure that people actually go, you know, check on that. Like, it, it's not normal forgetfulness. What would be like a sign of somebody that you said, you know what, maybe you should go get tested for, for you know, memory loss? There's a bunch of different warning signs that people can watch for. You can find more information about that on our website, alzfdn.org. But just to give you a couple of quick examples, you know, every now and again, we all forget where we put our car keys. You know, that's normal. If you're repeatedly misplacing your car keys and you're placing them in some place they really have no business being, like you're sticking them in the freezer, you know, that's a warning sign. If you forget where you park your car every now and again, that's normal and happens to everybody. If you don't know where you, what your car is, that's a warning sign. Or if you are continually experiencing memory loss that is really interfering with everyday life and you're having trouble with tasks that you were able to perform routinely without any problems that are now becoming more difficult. Those are warning signs as well. 
Again, the Alzheimer's Foundation of America is holding a free virtual education conference on Wednesday, March 9th, as a part of its Educating America tour to provide Texas residents with information about brain health, caregiving, and more. Uh, if you want to register, visit their website, alzfdn.org slash tour, or call 1-866-232-8484. Uh, whenever people register for this conference, what can they expect uh, to get out of it? A whole bunch of very helpful information. That's that's really the, the quick answer to that. We have a number of different sessions. We have a session led by Dr. George Perry from UTSA. He's also on AFA's Medical Scientific and Memory Screening Advisory Board. He's going to talk about the scientific side of Alzheimer's you know, what, what we know about it, what some of the research is showing and where we may be going in the future. We're going to have a session on how to deal with some of the more problematic behaviors of Alzheimer's, different neuropsychiatric symptoms that can cause things like agitation or aggression, you know, different practical steps that caregivers can use to handle those types of situations. And we're also going to have a session on uh, dealing with trauma as a caregiver, because certainly caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease is a, is a very tough thing to do. It's a labor of love. People are, are very often happy to do it, but it is hard. And that's this session is going to talk about just some different ways to make sure you're getting self-care as a caregiver. So there's really something for everybody here. And again, it's free, open to everybody. Uh, just visit alzfdn.org to register. And we hope to see everybody on March 9th. What what has the science shown us in the last couple of years? Because I know there's been a ton of breakthroughs whenever it comes to uh, to Alzheimer's medications, things of that nature. Now, there's not a cure. I don't want to put that out there. There's not a cure as of yet. But what has science kind of kind of given us over the last couple of years? I think progress is being made. As you mentioned, there is no cure yet. You know, that's something that scientists are working towards very hard every single day. I would say one of the really good things that has happened over the last couple of years is that the federal government has substantially increased federal funding for Alzheimer's research. So when the national plan to address Alzheimer's disease was unveiled in 2012, research funding annually was probably around $500 million a year. Um, over the last 10 years, it's increased to now over $3 billion in the current fiscal year. That's something that Republicans and Democrats have worked together on. Um, which is really great on a lot of levels to see that, but they've identified it as a priority. They have built on the progress and they, that investment is really helping to advance some of the science, but it's not enough because we're not at the finish line yet. And it's hopefully something we can build on in the years ahead. What is it that kind of drew you into being a part of the Alzheimer's uh, Foundation of America? What was it that kind of spoke to you that way? Do you have a connection to Alzheimer's? I always want what I do in my career to matter. You know, I, I before I came here, I worked in public service. I worked in the New York State Senate. Uh, our president and CEO was a New York State senator who I worked for for about a decade. And then he came here. And after a little while, there was a position open with the foundation. He invited me to to come on. And it's it's been terrific. You know, again, helping people is really important to me. And using your professional career to make a difference in the lives of others and give back and help them in their time of need is something I value tremendously. And it's something that AFA does every single day, whether it's through our helpline, whether it's through conferences like this, whether it's through different programs and, and services and funding research, you know, we're making things better for people. And that's what it's all about for me. What would be the message that you want people to, to take away from this interview? Like the number one thing that you would want people to take away from this interview? If this is part of your life, help is available. And if you're dealing with Alzheimer's, if, you, if you're caring for a loved one, if you have someone in your family who has it, if you have it, if you're concerned about brain health, don't deal with this alone. Don't just ignore it. Help is available. You can contact our helpline, 866-232-8484. You can also web chat through uh, our website, alzfdn.org, or you can communicate through text message to 646-586-5283. That helpline is available seven days a week. It's staffed by licensed social workers who are specifically trained in dementia care. And the other thing about that as well is the web chat and text message features can serve languages. So if you know someone who is not a, an English speaking person primarily, maybe their first language is Spanish or something else, they can still get help that way. Don't deal with this alone. If you have questions, if you need support, if you if you don't know where to turn, that's what we're here for. That's what we do every single day. Reach out. If we can get that text line one more time, please. 
646-586-5283. Excellent. Again, Chris Snyder, uh, the Director of Communication with the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. They are holding a free virtual educational conference on Wednesday, March 9th, as a part of its Educating America Tour, providing Texas residents with information about brain health, caregiving, which is extremely important, and more to learn more or register for free uh, for this virtual Alzheimer's educational program, visit alzfdn.org slash tour or call 866-232-8484. Chris, thank you so much for what you're doing and bringing awareness to, uh, to the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Mike, thanks so much for having me on and sharing the information. Really appreciate it.